morning and you've just hit the jackpot by clicking on this video yes it's here finally the fourth sizzling chapter of crossroads history uh, can't wait the benefit to you will be is that you'll hear some more absolute gems about crossroads history and i'm sure you will agree the more we know about our local area the more sense of community we'll have so without any further ado Let's get this show on the road. Let's get trottleized. Right, the first stop on this, uh, chapter number four, is actually Leeds Methodist Church, which is my church. So here we are, uh, this is a Sunday school uh, that was built in 1873. The first school in the village, uh, uh, nonetheless. And um, the original church actually was built in 1844. And um, uh, the church was a spike church, what they call a spike church, so it was very, very big. If you imagine the old typical Wesleyan or, or um, Methodist church, you know, so a big balcony and all the rest of it, pulpit. I'll try to throw a couple of pictures up and show you. But yeah, it closed in October 65. Uh, they just wanted enough of the money to keep it going and obviously uh, fell into a state of disrepair. But uh, yeah, um, but Leeds Methodist Church has obviously been important to me for lots of reasons. Anyhow, let me show you something else. Right, so uh, next thing I want to show you is uh, we're about stood where the church used to actually be, the main church, uh, before it got pulled down, and uh, uh, they were stood in the actual graveyard. So the, uh, uh, but the most famous uh, gravestone, really, that's in this churchyard, or one of the most favourite gravestones that's in this churchyard, is this one here. So this uh, magnificent monument is to William and Sarah Midgley, who were. Um, uh, the people who the, the arms house named after it, it was actually their son who, who, uh, who named it after them but these people were really in important in crossroads and ultimately they uh, they still they still are because the arms house is still there the trust the william and, and sarah midgley trust is still there so really 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 uh, important part of crossroads history but we've had quite a few in here there's i think there's innocent taylors in here and one or two other really famous crossroads people but uh if uh, at some point we'll we'll do inside the buildings, and I'm sure Leeds Methodist Church will let us have a look around, so that'll be something to look forward to. So, like I say, this is the uh, Sunday school, is this, and that's now the, uh, what we use as a church. Um, been using it since since, uh, since certainly I was a kid uh, when they moved out of the old church into into here in the 70s. Um, I think the first service I was ever at when we were about three years of age and uh, it was at the uh, Harvest Festival and apparently I handed the grapes over and said in Spanish uh, uh, you can have all the rest but can I have the grapes back so a little bit funny but an important part of my uh, early life because my mum used to take me to church every Sunday um, uh, Nelson Street were well represented because the, the Baineses were there and the, Lord, uh, the Scouts were there but this church has had other lots of people that have put lots and lots of time in so the Lorimers were the caretakers for lots of years they put loads and loads of years in uh, we had the Johnsons who were uh, 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 Mr Johnson was uh, the minister for a long time with the Cravens the Howells today but a few but a special mention must go to uh, Judith and Maurice Barron who have served this church for over 50 years absolutely incred incredible and sadly we lost Judith uh, through Covid and it were really sad because at a funeral we weren't even allowed to sing which were really really terrible but we got an incredible eulogy from Caroline her daughter um, uh, yeah which uh, uh, sort of made up for it but it's a real shame maybe at some point we'll have to have a something in memory of judith but uh morris i cannot tell you how much of a remarkable human being this man is i mean i've never met anybody with such forgiveness ever he's just an incredible incredible human being i don't think i've ever really seen him i've seen him get agitated but i don't think i've ever seen him lose his temper uh but yeah i mean he's raised literally hundreds of thousands of pounds uh over the years for various different causes and especially with his beard shave that he's done for the last sort of 25 years every five years he does a beard shave colors it all up and gets it shaved off and i think he's raised something like near a hundred thousand pound for polio so just an absolutely truly remarkable human being but not only the only truly remarkable human being from this church because there's another person who's truly remarkable that goes here a lady called Anna Rana and she's just worked tirelessly for this church absolutely tirelessly coffee mornings autumn fairs uh, cafe church you name it uh, when it comes to organizing it she's right in the thick of it and even now she's still making short boiler works and one or two other bits and bobs so uh, best bit about it is of course she's my mum so uh, an absolute legend of a lady uh, quiet unsung hero but yes uh, not to me an absolute legend of a lady so yes Anna Rana definitely worthy of a mention
Right, so I said that uh, there were also some building. There was, uh, this was built, it's uh, sheltered housing called Leesworth Court, and that was built in the 1980s. And it's fair to say, if they didn't give up the land to, for that to be built, um, uh, the church might not be here. So in respect, it was a tough decision, but the right decision. And also, we need sheltered accommodation in the village, so it's really, really is a, a wonderful thing in lots of ways. But yeah, so that's uh, Leesworth Court. So I'm going to try and get the next bit across the road, but I might have to stand here to do it because uh, it's... Uh, quite noisy if I get close to the road but I'll try and spin you around and show you maybe maybe if I do it the other way around so maybe if I if I do like that you can see behind me so if you look behind me you've got what is Leeds Primary School and uh, uh, it was built in 1899 after uh, so the second place that people got educated after uh, Wesleyan Chapel after Leeds Methodist and um, uh, three generations of Rana's have gone to this school and uh, I'm gonna say, say I've go back this way you might be able to hear me but yeah, three generations of Rana's have gone to uh, to, to Lee School, and um, uh, you know it was a primary school, then it was a first school, then it's gone back to a primary school. But yeah, the current head teacher is James Travers, really, really decent bloke. And uh, before him, we had Ed Whitehead, and for lots of years we had Mrs Holland, a wonderful time. But in my time there, we had teachers like the incredible Mrs Shoesmith. Mrs Shoesmith must have been there neck in the forty years, just incredible lady. She uh, had the first class. Um, we had Mrs Heap. Mrs Green, who still lives in the village, lovely lady, she used to do a tidy table competition, brilliant, brilliant lady. Mrs Bottomley, Miss Stewart, uh, Mr Fotherby, Mr Holland, uh, Mr Taylor, who uh, sends a little bit of a shiver down my spine, because follow, I followed him to Hartington and uh, felt the uh, flex of his size 12 Dunlop uh, uh, on numerous occasions. And we had uh, Mrs Barrett in the office, who still lives in the village, really lovely lady, and we had... Um, uh, uh, Mr Williams and Jim Proctor as uh, caretakers but just a fabulous fabulous school and it still is so uh, yeah that's Lee's first school that's another one that if we do an inside bit that we will uh, try and uh, try and try and get a look inside if we can Yeah, so I'm still by Lee School, and I forgot to mention we had two uh, wonderful uh, head teachers when I was there. We had uh, Mr. Ruffley, who was there for quite a good number of years, and we also had uh, Mr. Carroll, who's uh, Philip Carroll, still kicking about. Comes to some of my uh, talks that I've done at Lee's Methodist, but a really, really lovely man. So, yeah, uh, great memories at Lee School. We used to sing songs like, uh, Oh Jesus, I have promised, and uh, we used to also sing songs like uh, uh, The Lord's Prayer. And uh, I always remember they had a big fish tank, and uh, they had a television put next to the fish tank uh, waiting for a uh, space shuttle to take off and it never took off during school time but uh, uh, still some really fabulous memories. So the next place I want to talk to you about is this. Right, so this is Leeds Farm or as we call it, the other Leeds Farm because the main Leeds Farm is around the other side of uh, of the uh, uh, of here. So there's always like two Leeds Farms and um, uh, this place was owned by a bloke called John Green, and John Green uh, owned quite a bit of land around here. And he had he owned the slaughterhouse, which was at the top of uh, Bingley Road, uh, sorry, the bottom of Bingley Road for a lot of years. And he sold the chap to, to the farm, uh, sold the farm to a chap called Pearson, who built a mink, mink farm around the back. And um, uh, uh, he also uh, uh, built Lee's Lee's house, which I'll show you in a minute. That were built in the 1930s. And Pearson Pearson sold uh, the farm to a. Uh, uh, a guy called uh, uh, Cornthwaite. And all this information really ain't my information, it's come from uh, the oracle that is uh, Jeff Wilkins. So thank you, Jeff, for all this information. But yeah, it's quite important, is this place, uh, uh, for a good number of reasons. But yeah, they, uh, they owned quite a bit of land, did uh, um, the Greens, or uh, then the Pearsons, and obviously Mr. Cornthwaite. So quite an important part of the story. Good morning. Don't want to uh, intrude too much, so this is Lee's house, as you can see as we're going past. So yeah, a real truly lovely property built by Mr Pearson. So yeah, uh, you know, really, really lovely house. Yep, so there we go, that's, that's Lee's house. Right, the other Lee's farm, which was owned by the, what's known as Lee's farm, the main Lee's farm, is, uh, was owned by Jimmy Greenwood. 
and uh, Jimmy Greenwood uh, eventually sold it and the, the built house at the side of it where his barn used to be and what have you but the most famous uh, occupant of this place was the author Ellawell Sutcliffe who only lived here for about three or four years but we're claiming him because this is where he started and uh, I'll put a few pictures up I don't want to intrude too close to the house but we uh, we uh, we put a blue plaque up uh, uh, not so long ago and uh, uh, you know in honour of honor him being here so yeah that's uh, that's uh, uh, Lee's farm the other Lee's farm I'll show you a few pictures of that as well. I think it's that long ago since I did a video that uh, Wiles Bakery hadn't moved the shop down to where the post office used to be, but yeah, a real, real fantastic addition to the village. Uh, Wiles have been in this village for a long, long time and it was really, really brilliant that they, uh, that they decided to extend the shop into that side of it. So, yeah, uh, brilliant. Uh, really, really good addition to the village. Right, I forgot to mention the blue plaque was actually the brainchild of uh, uh, my fellow councillor Peter Clark and uh, it was his idea to get that up and running. We've got another one coming up. We're going to be un unveiling one to uh, George Feather very soon. But uh, this was another brainchild of uh, Peter's and that's historical street signs. So that might look 100 years old, but it's actually a replica. And we managed to get it put together with a lot of help, local help. So we had James Trunk who did the uh, calligraphy. I've got the, the, the uh, font correct for us. Um, we had uh, Elsfield Patterns, uh, Stitch, Neil Oldsworth. He, he, uh, he uh, set, got it all set up for us and what have you. And we used uh, uh, you know, uh, a family down in Keith for a little while. And now I think we've gone somewhere else for that. And then we've also used Worth Coatings to get them painted up. So they, they shouldn't need doing again. But a real, real fast, fantastic addition. And we, I think David Senior, our council, is on that now. So we're going to continue with that and do more and more of them. But really, really brilliant. Right, I am now on Ruth Street, which is uh, next to Frith Street and Annie Street, all three children of Innocent Taylor. So that's why you know you've got power when you're the name uh, streets after your children. But yeah, this is quite important, this, because if you turn, if I turn you around here, hopefully this will be a bit quiet and you'll be able to see is This down here is part of the avenue. But up until, uh, uh, the, until the 1960s, the village stopped here. So there was, I think there's a wall across here. And ultimately that was it. We were looking out onto open fields. But in, uh, like I say, in... Uh, 61 and 62, Jimmy Greenwood, who owned Lee's farm, um, he, he sold the land to uh, Ken Marshall, and uh, Ken Marshall built uh, uh, Parkview Avenue over the next few years, or, or the Parkview Estate. Um, um, and the fields below the park uh, uh, were owned by uh, uh, John Nelson, who owns Nelson's Transport. Now, he owned a pig farm, <laughs> did uh, John Nelson. Really nice guy, by the way. He's another one who's gone now, but a really nice guy. Always into his history, and um, so we had a we had a um, a pig farm, and we had Pearsons who had a mink farm, and we also had fat factory. So you can imagine uh, Crossroads was quite aromatic back in those days. Oh yeah, I forgot to add a uh, Norbrecht Drive, which is the top of Parkview Avenue, is was also built uh, by Ken Marshall. A little bit of free advertising, I think, will will do for my mate. Also a stone, if you want really good quality stone at an affordable price. Chizer, as we call him, Barry Oldsworth is your man, so give him a call. So you can see the other side of here, an incredible view down uh, down the Worth Valley, so really, really amazing. And then uh, to the to the right, you can sort of see the, that's the bottom field of the park, so that's how it gets its name, Parkview Avenue, but yeah, really nice. Uh, all semi, I think they're all semi detached, they might be an odd detached one, but mainly all semi detached. But yeah, a really nice uh, development. Right, so next uh, to make a mention is uh, Valley View Gardens. Now, uh, obviously, you've got Parkview Avenue on that side, and over there, you've got Lees Bank Avenue. Uh, but so once upon a time, there were just fields between here. I think they built these in the late 1980s, and I don't want to stick them on because I think we had a bit of a play around when they were building these. So yeah, uh, so this is Valley View Gardens, and obviously, that links up. Leeds Bank and part of the Avenue, but yeah, another uh, really nice part of, part of village, and um, a little bit more, a little bit less fragrant than when the Mink Farm used to be, because I think this is where Pearson's Mink, Mink Farm was up here. So yeah, uh, I'm sure it smells a lot better now than uh, what it did, but would have been stood on fields even up until 80s. This was still a field. 
Right, so next we've got Lee's Bank, and uh, certainly when I was growing up, Lee's Bank is where the posh kids lived. So yeah, so that's Lee's Bank, lovely estate, and this was started to be built in 1968 when uh, Mr Pearson sold off his land, um, and uh, he sold it to a builder called Gordois. Uh, some more information from my mate Jeff, and um, uh, they started building in '68, but I don't think I think it was phased. So it went through from sort of late '60s into the '70s, and there might even been the odd one in the, the 80s. In fact, I think it might have been the far side, uh, Lee's Bank Hill, that was the first bit to get built, because they look a, a little bit uh, more previous than these. I think the, the uh, more modern houses, uh, the bigger houses around here, I think they came came second. But yeah, that's uh, Lee's Bank Avenue. Quite a, a big development at the time in the village. Oh, I forgot to mention, let's throw some names in. So yeah, the posh kids as well, if you want to call them that. They weren't really posh, to be honest with you. They just, uh, just a bit posher than us <laughs> but yeah you had people living here like the the Dowdens, the Crowthers, the Bradleys, the Laycocks, Robinsons uh, uh, we even had a pools winner called uh, um, the McDonough family and they won a million pounds on the pool and a million pounds was a million pounds in fact I think it's a play kiss catch with, with daughter Julie should have uh, played my cards right there but yeah uh, true true millionaires at that time I don't know where they've gone to now they've probably been in Saint Tropez or somewhere like that but yeah pools winner uh, unbelievable that were like massive news but yeah that's a few of the people who used to live on Lee's Bank right so as you can see from the sign this is a Lee's, uh, Lee's primary school field uh, many happy days in here as a child and also as an adult because this is where we have our village gala every year uh, so yeah uh, organized by the Lee's and uh, Crossroads Village Association but yeah thank you to uh, Lee's primary school for letting us use uh, and the Bronte Academy Trust for letting us use this field it's very 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 much appreciated uh, we're at the top at Lee's Bank now and I'll just go spin you around. This is uh, Lee's Bank Cottages and uh, uh, these are listed of these these buildings here so they go back quite a fair bit really. Um, so uh, yeah uh, and uh, interestingly enough in one of the cottages uh, was, was once the home in the 1930s of uh, Ronald Murgatroyd and Ronald Murgatroyd was actually a very famous tenor. He actually had, uh, I think he had records, and in fact I think I've got a link to a record that I found on, on YouTube to one of, uh, one of his uh, records. And Miss Roberts at Lee's school said that she was told by Billy Clayton, who was the music teacher at Eastwood School, that the acoustics in Lee's Methodist were that good that Ronald could actually crack a wine glass. So yeah, uh, interesting uh, but listed. And then uh, I'm going to go the other side of the Lee's cottages and show you something else in a moment. Right, so the other side of Lee's Cottages is uh, this house here, and this used to be the house of the Denbys. In fact, I think uh, for once upon a time, my uh, grandma used to clean for the Denbys, Betty Denby. Um, uh, but before that house was there, there was a big barn. And when they pulled the big barn down from the farm, uh, uh, they, uh, they used actually this, the stone was used to, for the wall above the bowling green at Howarth. But yeah, uh, Betty Dem uh, Denby, I think, used to be a driver. And uh, her granddad was a guy called Ellis Driver, so I think I've got a picture of it in the 1930s, or just before, early 1930s, where um, uh, the band was still there, so I'll try and put that picture up, but yeah. Uh, ben, ben, uh, uh, the small farm was owned by uh, Jonas Denby, so the Denbys and the Drivers owned uh, uh, the, top of, uh, the top of here for quite some time, so yeah, that's uh, Betty Denby's old house. Right, we'll keep trying to dodge cars. So next on the agenda is uh, Fellwood Avenue, uh, another area where posh kids lived. And uh, uh, Fellwood Avenue was built in the uh, 1970s and uh, it used to be part of the Medal Estate. And uh, it also has the man's house for uh, Lee's Methodist Church for the vicar, uh, Lee's Methodist or the, the preacher. So, uh, and it still does, so that's, uh, that's great. But yeah, uh, Fellwood, uh, Fellwood Avenue, nearly bought an house on there, but realized I couldn't afford it. Right, so next up, just across the road, is, uh, is Laburnum Grove. And Laburnum Grove, before it was called Laburnum Grove, it was actually called uh, uh, Guinevere. Um, but they obviously decided that uh, Laburnum was better. So they went with Laburnum Grove. But uh, yeah, a lot of this information has come from uh, Marion Aston, Aston. So thank you, Marion. But yeah, um, the, uh, uh, the land was sold by the, the Denbys, obviously, when they sold the farm. So they obviously, by selling the farm there, they obviously must probably built the house off the back of it so so yeah but that's a uh, laburnum grove and same again quite quite a nice uh, semi-detached houses and there might be the odd detached there but yeah 
Laburnum Grove been here since the 1930s, yeah, quite impressive. Right, so still dodging cars, so I'm halfway down Vale Mill Lane now, and uh, we've come to uh, this side of the road, we've got, uh, opposite side of the road, we've got Long Acres. And Long Acres is a massive estate, it was built in the 1990s, and um, goodness me, I think there must be about 200 houses on it or something like that. But yeah, really, really big estate. Uh, Made a big difference across roads. Bradford still think it's in Howarth, which is totally and utterly ridiculous. But uh, yeah, car going by. Don't think we're ever going to get this film done today without any car noise, but I'll try my best to, so you can still hear me. But yeah, uh, just to show you how old I am, I used to uh, used to sledge down them fields when, when I was a kid. But yeah, that or, um, that's uh, Long Acres. Uh, a big difference to crossroads, that estate. Right, quick bonus one for you. I'm uh, going past Bill Terrace, and I think, I think it might be now number 24. I think, I think it was 24. Uh, was the home of my friend and uh, distant relation Mickey. And uh, yeah, Mickey used to live there with his brother Johnny and his uh, father Tommy. Tommy used to have a bike and he used to park it in the living room, <laughs> which is quite interesting. But yeah, good lad Mickey it helped me so much with history at soldiers. Uh, his knowledge is just incredible, but yeah, uh, good old Mickey. Right, we're trying to dodge traffic, don't know where we'll manage it, but yeah, I'm just going to quickly show you Vale Mill. So Vale Mill was built in 1785 by John Greenwood and uh, um, a textile mill. And as you can see there, they used to, this, if you look, turn around here, this is where the mill pond used to be. In fact, you can see the, the old sluice gate through the trees there. But this is where the mill pond used to be. You can sort of see the railway up on the embankment now, but it used to run right through the mill pond in what was called the, the deviation. So if I get a chance, I'll put you a picture up uh, of the deviation. So the last bit of for today is uh, just quickly Vale Cottages. I've done this, I covered this before on the um, five mills uh, video that I've done. But yeah, this is Vale Cottages, uh, also a bit built by John Greenwood at around, around the same time as Vale. So at the end it is Vale Farm. And then you've got uh, Vale Cottages, and you can see the end one is slightly bigger because that used to be the Sunday school for the uh, once upon a time. Uh, so yeah, uh, but uh, quite important at bottom end of village because uh, behind it we've got Murgatroyd Wood, which is beautiful, but also uh, it's housed uh, a couple of our World War One soldiers in uh, Fred Nixon and uh, Sam Rainford. So a really, really important part of the village. Anyhow, that is finally uh, uh, chapter four uh, of the uh, Crossroads history. Uh, walks so hopefully you've enjoyed it and if you have it'd be wonderful if you wanted to subscribe or give us a thumbs up but until next time take care and we'll see you soon
Oh, God. 